The Ryan Rossillo Show Post Show Podcast. 159, I can ball. Where's Dream Sickle or whatever you call it? Midwest Michelle, you make my heart beat faster. The Post Show Pod is on. All right, episode nine of the Post Show Pod. I'm Tommy Freeze Pops. I got Michelle Smallman to my right. Hello. And to my far right, Steve Cerruti. What's good? And we're going to start the show today talking about two special shows we had over the past week. Let's start last week, give our reaction to the Barstool guys in studio, because we got some tweets from people that were upset that we didn't give them a post-show pod right away after that show. And I'm speaking just for myself. I was really tired after that show. I don't think we had it in us to record another 20 minutes after the show to talk about it. I know. We got a ton of tweets from people bummed out that we didn't do initial reaction. But I have to tell you, I was so drained after that show. I'm with you, Tom. I was physically exhausted. And after talking to Ryan after the show, I think it's because for three plus hours, you're on edge just wondering what are they going to say and you're trying to coordinate different things. And it's kind of like after you take a big test, you know, it's just that initial sigh of relief. Like, yes, we did it. And we just had no idea where they were going to go or what they were going to do next. Like, my hand was on the trigger, dump button, the whole time, ready to go. Yeah, we tested that bad boy out three times to make <laughs> we, sure. We tested every dump button in the control room. We were looking for one in the, the studio here. I don't think we ended up testing that. Sorry, guys. No swear words from our boys, Nothing. though. Nothing. I think the only time that I was really nervous was when we found out that they really didn't like Ravel. Yeah. And, were, and, and you know, one in particular, what's up, PFT? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that disdain for one another is real between yeah. both of them. Yeah, and it was a little bit uncomfortable, but I think uncomfortable radio is good sometimes, and I yeah. think that was good um, because, like, the, you could clearly—I mean, when he when PFT said "keep my name off your lips," like I, it was on, like he didn't want to talk to him, <laughs> and then just lifting weights in the background for those of us that, for those of the people that watch on TV. I mean, they just didn't want anything to do with him. Big Big Cat seemed like he was like, "All right, you know, Darren, we're cool, blah blah blah. Let's try to like make this peaceful." That's I think like the most nervous I was that anything was going to go down. But for the most part, like they knew what they knew they were at ESPN. They couldn't do like their PMT thing, but it was still funny and good. And um, I hope we get them back. No, I thought it was great, but we were just gassed. <laughs> so we were all so gassed. We felt like it was the third hour for you know like the, the fill in guys. Like oh, they always complain about going full three hours. I came in around. I I came in. A lot of I come in the studio a lot of times to check in when we have fill-ins just to make sure how they're doing. And I came in to check in around, I don't know, maybe 2.15 after that segment with the guys and asked them how they were doing. And they both were like, man, normally when we do our podcast, it only takes like 40 minutes. This is no joke. They were like, we're tired. And I said, yeah, you still got another hour to go. So you might want to chug that water you have next to you because you've got a long time <laughs> to go. So not only were we exhausted, they were just totally exhausted at the end. They Plus we gassed. had bosses coming in and out that we'd never seen before in the history of our show. Yep. So it was like, okay, everyone's kind of on edge. Like yeah. these guys, everyone wants to meet these guys. It was honestly like more than Van Pelt and Chris Long. Like people wanted to meet PFT and Big Cat. It was like the Beatles were here. They're yeah. kind of the a big Beatles deal. of podcasts. Like guys in our department, t-shirts showing up, like signing, <laughs> signing things, some random intern yeah, came in just like made his, his way in yeah, and like bumped so right out of the way <laughs> so yeah shout out to their intern billy football for not knowing that we were on tv until 10 minutes after the show ended yeah That's billy legendary. football you know 18 year old kid you know he was confused <laughs> i think it was a big day for him i think it was third day on the job he was pretty nervous <laughs> in three days on the job the guy sat behind home plate at a mets game and came to espn and was on tv pretty good gig yeah, pretty good first three days now the second special show, in quotes, uh, that we've had in the last week was Ravel on Monday. And we were all pleasantly surprised. We came in with really no expectations on that one. I mean, I, speaking for myself personally, uh, I came in with an open mind, and he was pretty good. I mean, for two hours, he was great. The third hour, he dragged a little. The Randy but Scott hour. The Randy <laughs> Scott hour. Um, Ravel was awesome. He I was think, great. I think Ravel. It's it's weird because some like like he's so used to, and he said this that he's so used to like the two minute Sports Center hit where like you know you maybe get asked one or two questions, you have your talking points, blah blah blah, and having a conversation with a co host is like a completely different animal. And a lot of people don't really know how to do it. They'll talk for like four straight minutes and they'll just like completely like, you know, they, it won't be conversational. 
And I thought Darren did a really good job of that. And I thought like the revelations thing was like a really nice thing to break it up because he had all this weird information that he kept sending us for like weeks, weeks. in this email <laughs> chain. And all of us are like, this is a terrible idea. This is a, ter- we can't possibly do a radio segment out of this, but it all ended up working in those little revel, revelations. revelations. And-, and now another revelation with Darren Revel. <laughs> or you can get all those little quirky things out, like hot dogs and the freeze guy and all this weird Darren Ravel thing and all those weird things the he The freeze. He loved the freeze He loved guy. the freeze. Ryan oddly loved him, too. That doesn't strike me as a thing that Ryan would love, but he did. And so. then Ravel Tank. So good. So good. Yeah, needed better ideas. Um, you know, Goose Ravencroft was, yeah. you know, was only, the only he one coming it. with really great ideas. But uh, guys, like, we'll, do this, we'll try to do this again next time. And... Hopefully somebody, if there is a next time, hopefully there is a next time. Yeah. Know what's up? I think we'd be open to it. I but we want to take calls again. Like, like get your ideas ready now because there's a hundred real dollars that Darren Ravel right. will give to you. Michelle, how was screening those sports business calls? Well, was it worse than life advice or better no, than life advice? No, better than life advice because I think the people that were calling in had very specific things that they wanted. But <laughs> They were looking a, for investments. A lot of them were just terrible ideas. Um, but I thought Darren was sneaky good. I, oh, yeah. I thought he had a couple really funny one-liners. Like when Ryan would do his live reads, he would just lean up to the mic and go, brands. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, you know, and I, he was really, really funny. And um, I think the Ravel Tank is something, even if Darren doesn't, for some reason, co-host for a full show, that's something we could get him to come in and do again. I think it was a really, really fun segment. Yeah, I really liked it. My favorite thing that Ravel told us that day, and I told him that he shouldn't mention it on the air, but then he ended up doing it, so now... It gives me permission to mention it here. What's up? That he has 800 tweets planned out for the rest of the year. That's insane. That will go out at specific times based on specific events that are going to happen. And he told us what his favorite tweet is going to be for the year. He did not reveal it, and I don't want to blow up his spot, but he was pumped because he's like, that's going to get a million retweets. I mean, the fact that he can plan out his whole year like that is pretty remarkable. Ravel gets an A in my book. Me too. I'll have him back anytime he wants to come. Let's go. The Ryan Rossillo Show Post Show Podcast. Do it! Behind the Glass. All right, so control room conversation. Yes. Been waiting for this. this Beyonce like v. Moment. Rihanna. This, Saruti and Michelle are both very passionate about this. And yeah, we need the DMX, DMX music to hit here. <laughs> I personally. <laughs> am a Rihanna guy. What's up? But I don't feel super passionate. Either way, I can be convinced. So, Michelle, I will give you the floor. In fact, I'll just be the the moderator I, here. You're the moderator. Can I just say this here? and then you yeah, can Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be Molly, sure. I'll just say this. Yes, Max, a- go a- ahead. Everyone, whoa, everyone says... You're deplorable. Everyone's the, a, a Beyonce <laughs> fan girl or boy, right? She's like Queen B, Queen Bay, whatever you want to call her. <laughs> and she can do no wrong, um, and everyone thinks she's just like this goddess walking around the earth. But my point is that I think Rihanna, and this is how this we the, the reason I'm telling you this because how we got in the conversation. Yes. I think Rihanna is her catalog, her songs, it's all better, but she some somehow isn't in that territory that Beyonce is, and I and I want to know why. No, I, okay. So I want Michelle so, to explain. So is that. this your caveat. opening argument here? Yes. Okay. Quick caveat: I am a Rihanna fan. I like her music. I'm a Beyonce fan. I think she's great. However, you guys are ruining the the segment. No, but I'm very passionate about why I think. No, 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 no. Well, I, I don't hate Rihanna, <laughs> but I just don't. Well, this think isn't going to work then. I don't think she's as great as Beyonce <laughs> at all, and I think she is in that upper echelon. But I just think Beyonce is far superior from an artistry standpoint. Yeah, but I think Beyonce and her fans hide behind the artist thing. They're like, "Oh, my, you, you just you don't get it." Like hide with her music, it. "Oh, Lemonade." Oh, you, oh, it's mm. a it's a project. It's, it's about her and her and like embracing her inner self and coming oh, in her boy, demons and go. getting rid of Jay Z and all this negative energy around her. And you're just like, "What if it was just a crap album? Like, what what if what if that's so? If that, is that okay to say? Like, really good people have down albums, right? And have bad albums. Are you trying to tell me Lemonade was not good? I just don't think it's as good as everyone said it was. And I think everyone has to be like, oh, if you don't say Beyonce is the greatest thing in the world, then like, ev- then Twitter just murders you. Incorrect. I think if you want to call Lemonade an album, that's your first that's, problem. And that's the perfect Beyonce. Oh, it's, it's more than an album. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's an She's an artist. A lifestyle. It's an entire film that correlates with an album. And it's also... It's a couple of music videos. Like, Let's not <laughs> act like this is some like 
Scorsese mm. movie that it's she actually put together. actually much more than that. It's not just a music video. Have you even seen I have Lemonade, seen it. I, I've seen it. And it's, you were not Im- thoroughly impressed. It's a bunch of music videos. I saw put Katie Ellen spoof. Cool. <laughs> Let's mention someone on another network. <laughs> It's a it's a bunch of it's a bunch of music videos put together. Like it's mm. nice. It t- probably took a ton of time, and honestly, I respect that she was able to talk about an aspect of her life that probably wasn't the most fun for her. But I don't know. That, the album was okay. To me, real art comes from life experience, from pain, from love, from whatever. For Beyonce, Rihanna said pain. From and for, love. for Beyonce to be able to take something that she never had to discuss in her entire life and not only put it out there, but make this incredible piece of of not only film, of music, of fashion, of all this stuff. Not only that, there were so many political undertones in there, awesome. she, a lot of female empowerment. And for her to work through that to serve as something that other women can look at and identify with is huge. What's I mean, I love Rihanna, but like all she's talking about is strippers and weed. So what? Whoa. I'm I'm just saying. What? But the, my point is that Rihanna's music is just flat out better. It's better. Her music is okay. Better. You want to go one on one, song for song? You think Rihanna, all has, Rihanna, Rihanna talks about is Rihanna has the most. Rihanna has. 14 number one singles. You know, the Beatles are one <laughs> and Elvis and Elvis is two. Guess where Beyonce isn't even in the top 10. Michelle? Clap back, Michelle. Michelle is furiously squeezing her Clap stress back, ball. Michelle. Let's see. What do she you got? Has this little stress pad that she got from the calf. And I'm afraid that the goo inside of it is going to get on the counter soon. Also, Rihanna's like work has been very, speaking, uh, not even a pun intended, great song, but her, her catalog of songs isn't, it's, it's very different. And she's, she's done a ton of different things. She's done work with Paul McCartney. Also, she totally, totally crushes Beyonce in most, I think all collabs. She's collabed with, uh, she's collabed with, I'm <laughs> sure, has she actually collabed with Beyonce? Have they ever collabed together? Probably. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You're either. thinking of, uh, Beyonce and Nicki Minaj? Well, Rihanna's done with Nicki Minaj. She's done. What, what song? She's done Paul McCartney. She's done what Kanye song she West. Done with Nicki Minaj? I don't know. I'm sure she has. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, well then take that one Not out. Off the top of my head, I don't think so. <laughs> then take that one out. Okay, she's done so Eminem. Just, I mean, she's this done, is like fake news. You were saying, oh, she's, she's collaborated with all these people. Great. She's so, done Beyonce Coldplay. did an incredible song. And with Drake. Here, here's the here's the number. Beyonce number one single with Coldplay. Okay, I mean, but actually, Princess of, Princess of China sneaky better Coldplay song with Rihanna than the than him for the weekend with Beyonce. Agreed. No, it's not. Him Thank for you, the Tom. weekend is better. What's up? No, Agreed. Just because it was on the radio more doesn't mean it was better. <laughs> All right, Michelle, we've got a lot of arguments here from Saruti. I, I need you to. Hear, I need something from I you, Michelle. Something other than, other than, Michelle. Other than been, the it's art that every Beyonce fan hides behind. You have been eye rolling. The one thing about been eye rolling over here, but. I could see you're also brainstorming for a fantastic rebuttal, and I'm excited for it. Smallman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tom. You want to talk greatness? What is greatness without longevity? Beyonce comes on the scene 1997, okay? It's not like Rihanna's longevity. She's been around since, like, the early 2000s. Beyonce's been able to evolve. Her catalog is more dense. any (laughs) artist out there. With deuces. You think she's... No, no, no. Okay. So Beyonce is... Very akin to Justin Timberlake, only better, I think. <laughs> and for you to be in an early, late 90s, early 2000 girl group and emerge from that as a, as a solo success, not only a solo success, but every album you put out is an evolution from a young girl, you know, finding her way, dating Beyonce, or excuse me, dating Jay-Z, you know, and tell your story as you go and not only mature musically, but mature in the fashion realm. You, She's become a mother. And anything that Beyonce does is so well thought out, whether it's a Super Bowl oh, performance. Oh, like that sweet photo shoot of her, like, <laughs> you know, pregnant, hanging out with, like, as, like, a, she was, like, a goddess of something. It was the weirdest photo shoot I've ever seen in my life. Oh. And everyone's like, oh, it's so beautiful. Well, you didn't she's really so get it. so progressive. You didn't oh. get it. Every argument for the Beyonce <laughs> thing is I don't get it. That they always hide behind the oh you get you're just you're you're not sophisticated that was just like her Grammys performance everyone was like that was terrible I was it, like, was it was awful it's her own it, it to really, motherhood really sucked. it's it her was own awful. to motherhood it was so boring I well that, Rihanna, that's because you top didn't 10 like the songs in in single sales all <laughs> Beyonce, time twenty second, Grammy second, awards second behind Madonna that's it great I'm not saying that Rihanna's ba- I'm saying that Beyonce is on a different level like. For you to put something out that is so – anything that you do that's so well thought out that has political and – you, she's just 
it's so hard to put into words how how like transformative Beyonce is in everything that Can she you just does. admit to me that your number one argument and that's all I want to hear. That's all this is all I want to hear. Your number one argument is that you don't get it. No. You just don't get the I haven't even brought up the fact that Beyonce is also a film star. Well. In what? In Fox, Austin Powers? Fox, Foxy, Cleopatra? Hey. Mm. Great Hit movie. the overrated button. <laughs> no way. I love that movie. Hit the button, no, Tom. I'm Hit the charge. button. All right. I, have, I haven't even gotten to my, to my biggest <laughs> argument yet. Okay. If we're talking straight skill set, like if we're giving each of them a draft grade, Beyonce has a way better voice than Rihanna. I've seen Beyonce oh, live. I don't know about that. Way she, better. Hey, she hey. danced and sang for three hours straight, and her voice a cappella is unlike anything I've ever heard. I'll give you that. Are you fashioning you need, Rihanna? Hey, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I'll give you that. You need one banger for a night out with your girls. Who do you who are you calling? You calling, calling Beyonce or you calling Rihanna? I'm calling Beyonce. This is over. You can't. That's in. That's wrong. That's a flat out. That's incorrect. Every single time you pick a Beyonce song to party to. I mean, I'm sorry, oh, a, a Rihanna song to party to. I think that was a Be- Freudian slip, my man. I'll leave yeah. it in. I'm gonna leave it in. This, leave it. Leave it. This in. This entire care. segment is going unedited. Good. <laughs> Although I will take out the part where I swore a bunch. Sarudi, what's up? I, I rest my case. I just I don't want to be. I, everyone keeps telling me, oh, you don't get it, and it's it, it's. Hmm. Oh, I don't get it. Well, a lot of people don't get it. Everybody thought that Super Bowl performance sucked. But why? Why? Why does? Why does she just get to hide behind no, the no, artistic? No, no. The Super Bowl. The Super Bowl segment. Or not Super Bowl. What, what, what am I thinking? Of? The Grammy one. The performance was great. Where she was like carried on these. Like she. Like I don't understand. Like, She's pregnant. What is so? What? Here's a lot here's, of people were pregnant. Me, when Kanye took the artistic turn, it worked. Beyonce's kind of tried to do it. I don't think it's guys, worked. First of all, Kanye will be the first to defend Beyonce. Agreed. I won't though. Here, here's my closing argument, okay? When it comes to pure talent, choreography, overall message, fashion choices, artistry, there's a reason she's called the queen. There's a region, reason that legions of fans, the Bayhive, Who have followed follow her, her music, everywhere. Her average music. Think about this. Jay-Z <laughs> okay, is one of the overall, I mean. best rappers in our generation, yep. and Beyonce, as a single talent, has eclipsed him. Well, she's, she's outlasted him because he's terrible. She's more famous now. than her husband. Like, think about because that. Because he's for terrible a now. Think about that for a second. Sure, she's better than Jay Z. She's more talented than Jay Z. I'll give her that. She's oh. she's better than Rihanna. I think you just like Rihanna I'm just because saying, she's younger and edgier. No, and no, and you I'm just saying cooler. song for song. If I'm like, hey, if, if I'm going to open up my Spotify play, like and just be like, hey, what do I want to hear right now? I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick way more Rihanna songs than I'm going to pick Beyonce songs for any mood. I'm going to especially say that's a mistake. rage mood. We're going to close this out. Michelle, top five Beyonce songs. Oh my god, that's so difficult. So Rudy, You're putting me right on the spot top five here. Rihanna songs. Top five, no particular order. S and M definitely in there. I'll give you the Princess of China song from Coldplay. Where have you been, Club Banger? Great song. Uh, found love in a hopeless place. Great, Absolute club great jam. banger. Yep. And what should, On I, the pre-game what should I round to the top? Day. What should I round the top out with? Um, we'll start with Pwn to Replay and just go with the original one. Oh, oh, oh. Mr. DJ. Shelly. All right, Michelle, go. Number five for me. I'm going to throw in Formation because... Good tune. That is the signature single off of Lemonade. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the first time we've really seen Beyonce take a big political risk, right? For her to speak out on what was happening in the news at the time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to start sleeping. Number four. (laughs) I'm going, you want to talk, you want to talk bangers with your girls? How about Flawless? Okay. Coming in at number four. Totally good song. Flawless. Flawless remix. Even better. Throw it in a remix. You can only pick one and Nicki Minaj made it better. So I don't think Beyonce gets credit for that. (laughs) Number three. Who run the world? Terrible. Song. Girls. You know they do. Yeah. Number two. Basic, probably. Number two. Be you want to roll down your windows and sing a song? How about Love on Top? Mm. It's a good tune. Great song. I'll give you that too. And Surprised we, you put it at number two, but yeah. Yeah. And number one, this was very hard for me. I actually had to scroll a lot because there's so many options. I was thinking, should I go with a Beyonce, Jay-Z collab? I don't really know. But to me, it's really Beyonce's vocals, just her pure Strip down talent that makes her what she is. So Halo. I'm going. I'm going Halo. Yeah, yeah. I'm going great. Halo. Yep. Incredible song. No, Halo is a good song. Halo okay. comes in at number one. Tell me you don't get the feels when you hear Halo. Okay, I will admit Michelle's top five was better than your top oh. five. But <laughs> yes, I came in a Rihanna guy, and I didn't think your arguments overall, Michelle, were, were enough to convince me. me. 
<laughs> he just yelled over me every time. They weren't enough to convince me to go Beyonce. I don't know. I think I'm still Rihanna. So, because Tom's a partier, and when you want to party, you put on. I Rihanna. think that's it. I think it's because I, I like to, to a, rage. Put on, pour it up, pour it up. As a guy from Boston, I thought he liked greatness, but I guess not. The Ryan Rossillo Show. Why are you so defensive of Third Eye Blind? It's a we, great summer band. Post show podcast. Some listener questions for you guys. The first one from Cameron. Which co-host slash co-worker would you take along for an eight-hour road trip? And what's on the playlist? Hashtag asking all them questions. All right, I'll start here. And we can... Yeah, only Sur- one. Saruti and I can settle our differences here. Yeah, and, it did just get heated in here. And know that if I have to pick one co-worker to go on a road trip with, it's Saruti because we've already done it. Yeah. Okay. For those who don't know the story, uh, we went on a fall football tour this past year, and we were going to um, to Tallahassee mm-hmm. for Florida State. And what many people don't realize is we don't get a day off work to travel. And we're based out of Connecticut, and there's not many flights, shockingly, like late night going out of Hartford. So we have to work the show until 4 and then, li- sorry if any cops are listening, literally speed as fast as we can to the airport to make don't snitch. typically a 5.30 flight. So... All of us, we book it out. We head to the airport. Ryan and Danny both flew Delta because they're about that points life. And they were going through Atlanta. So Rudy and I flew an unnamed airline and we were going through <laughs> Charlotte. So we make our, our uh, we get on the plane, we make the flight and we sit there for like an hour on the runway. And we're like, we're never going to make our connection. So long story short, we get there and we've got maybe 20 minutes before before we need to make it. Well, of course, we land on one side of the airport and we have to sprint through the entire airport. We make it before the plane's supposed to take off. And of course, no one is working at the desk at the gate. So we see the plane. We can't get on the plane. Long story short, some incompetent people working for the airline had no... Brian. It was Brian. Couldn't help us out. So Saruti and I at 11 p.m. had to rent a car in Charlotte and drive seven plus hours through the night through the south to get to Tallahassee. We we got there at what? 7:30 in the morning and we had to be on set by 9. Yep. It was so It was but, the most mad I've ever seen so the show. So just because <laughs> this has already happened, you're going to just settle and say, "I have already done it. I'm going to Because go I know ready. I can do it. So because you, it was you actually bo- sneaky fun. You both yeah. <laughs> choose each other. Yes. Yeah. Wow. We had a great time. That's kind of lame. No, it's no, not. No, we stopped lame. at a Waffle House. There I were a lot of Waffle House. Played him the best. Lame. The best playlist he's maybe ever heard. It was a good playlist. There was no Beyonce. Actually, there, <laughs> there was Beyonce. But oh. We're not going to go there. All right. So you guys choose each other. I'm picking Willie Colon. Miss you, brother. <laughs> wow. All Classic. right. Brown noser. <laughs> I thought you'd pick Ryan so you could ask him all sorts of Boston sports questions in the car. No. No. I think I think I'm going to go with my boy Willie. Number two is from Dale, and I feel like Dale's a program director or something. This is a very inside question. Okay. Are your shows planned for the listener who listens the whole time or for listeners who listen for just 20 minutes? Yeah, is this like a trick question from yeah, my Yeah, this is, is it like, did this come from Justin Craig? No, but I, I'll, do you want to go first? Because I, I have I, I, an answer. I'll defer it to you since you're in charge. Well, I would say both. Okay. You know, we, of course, take all three hours into account, but there's certainly segments, especially at the top of the show, that we want to revisit because it's it's the news of the day. So, like, for instance, today, you know, we're talking about the Cavs, obviously all the news that's happening. So someone that's listening in the first hour may not have heard, or excuse me, in the third hour may not have heard it in the first hour. So you have to re- revisit it. So you, yes, have to take into account the full three hours by furthering the story, maybe by adding sound that's come out that day or, you know, news breaks on Twitter, you follow it along. But but you know, it's it's a segment to segment thing. People aren't list people aren't typically listening for the full three hours. It's a healthy mix of both. So yes. Rudy? It's pretty much said all you needed to say. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think it's a pretty healthy mix of both. I would say that our fourth segments every hour feel like they're a little bit more for our P one guys. You know, the people that are listening to the whole show or listen every day. I feel like that's when we get to show a little bit more personality from it's a Ryan. Scheduled fun? Yeah, it's almost like scheduled fun for the fourth segment of every hour. Uh, but sometimes you know, the, the day is so news heavy that we can't do it. But that's that that's my answer. It's a little, little healthy mix of both. 
Um, all right, Michael said, how often does the show crew get together outside of work, and what does that consist of? Hashtag post show pod. Well, including Ryan, never. Um, yeah, Ryan never Excluding has. Ryan, we've done it once. Yeah. Because, well, so once, well, once with the whole crew. I would say before that. Bubba, when Bubba, for those of you who listened before, was on the show, he was in charge of team building activities. Yeah, it's and, taken a hit since he left the show. Yeah, so Bubba used to plan. His birthday today. Shout out, Bubba. Shouts to Bubba. Happy birthday. Um, I love Bubba. But he used to plan dinners, you know, where we He's were a big planner and, like, friend guy. Yeah. I'm never going to do that. Um, Free Spouse is probably never going to do that. Yeah, Ryan's do I have certainly to, never going do to do that. Do I have to take over that role? Like, is I mean, that. That's part of your responsibilities that you've just been lacking on. We coordinated a trivia night. Yep, yep. that was fun. We did a trivia night, what, like a month ago? No. I think it was, it was more, more than, than a month. Two no. months ago? I don't know. Time flies. Yeah. The problem Time flies when I mean, Rudy and I have been to a Celtics game together. That's true. That's right. That's that was true. a fun segment on the air. Yeah. Michelle and I have <laughs> hung out together a few times. Have we? At like parties and stuff. Oh, yeah. You've had parties at your house. I've yeah. Been to. We've been that's to the right. bar a few times. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 I don't really go to those things because. Um, we went to the bar that time with John Hayes, the that's true. Fine that's because yeah, that a Fine Bonds producer was in. I used to live with him. Yeah, back when he was working in Bristol, and I wanted to see him, so Tom and I hung out. That night, then that was fun. Played some darts, but but like as an actual entire show group, unit, yeah. I mean, like never. We kind of just Rarely. like go home and do it. Like you know, you want to go home. Oh, we spend decompress. you know eight hours a day with each other every single day. It's yeah. not like we want to hang it's not, out. And it's not like a, like a normal office job where like you're next to somebody, but you don't have to interact. Like we interact for seven, eight, it's a seven team. hours a day. Yeah. We're in a windowless room yeah. for seven we, hours yeah. together. Yeah. And yeah. We eat lunch together. I mean, you know, yeah, we literally do everything together. Right. It's for it's seven a lot, hours. You know. But I think. I mean, it's not. I don't. I don't hate it. I like you guys. I mean, you guys <laughs> suck, and I'm bored. And I just want to leave. But. I think Tom <laughs> hangs out with a lot of people from work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, outside of our show crew, I mean. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I hang out with uh, the work crew. I mean, they're my Connecticut friends. Sure. Anyone that's having a beer, Tom is down. To yeah, do. Tom's always down to hang. <laughs> I have if a lot of ice friends cold in the bush lights. Tom is in. I was talking about <laughs> moving today in the control room. Tom's like, "Oh, you should." Live, move near me. He's like, we can go on walks. Yeah, the most boring conversation of all time. You guys are like, we can go on walks together. I oh my god! I was walks. joking about I how boring walks. Farmington, Connecticut is. Walks are great. It was a joke. And then I got sneaky excited about walks. Okay, you did it bummed me out? <laughs> I our, love walks. Our next question. I'm going to go to Scott, and I think this is a this is a fun question because I think we're all going to have a different answer for this. Okay. Three hour radio shows: too long, too short, or perfect length? I think the two hour show is the perfect length. I think it also depends on the host, right? So if it's a, if it's a solo show, I think two hours is the length. Uh, three hours, I guess you can do with two hosts. But um, like we've said before, we often repeat a lot of things in the last hour of the show. I I think you know the four hour the how Mike and Mike does four hours every day, and uh, it's amazing to me. Actually, it's that's such an that's a, that's half of a day that you would be at work for the average human being that you are on the air talking about stuff. That's insane. At that time of the morning. At that time of the morning. That's it's really insane. tough. I think it, the perfect show is two hours long. I concur with Saruti. I The show that I was on before I came uh, to Bristol was four hours. It was afternoon drive, four hours, but it was still a beast to produce. Um, I think, as we just discussed, a lot of times in that third hour, you're trying to revisit things you spoke about in the first hour because you're trying to serve a different audience in a different time slot. I think two hours, I would think prefer almost any show to be two hours long because I think in two hours you have enough freedom that you can mix it up and get to many different topics, but you have that such a short time frame to get through everything that you're going to maintain that high energy that you need throughout the entire That's show. That's the thing is the energy lacks at the end of a show especially when you're doing a segment that you maybe already did for a new audience mm-hmm. it's tough to replicate it every single time right i would love to to do two hours also I think producing a so two-hour show is the easiest thing in the world oh yeah. my God, don't so at me people that work here it is you get like maybe one big guest a day yeah if breaking news happens you know you can throw someone else in there but usually you don't want to clutter it with a lot of other voices yeah. because you want to have that time to speak for yourself. Having said that, download all three hours of the app on the ESPN <laughs> or the yeah. show on the ESPN yeah. app and the Apple podcast. So I grew up listening to four hour shows because in Boston, both stations, it's four hours, four hours, four hours for all the day parts and the night stuff. And I kind of grew up with that in mind like, oh, sports radio, it's a four hour show. And I got here and. 
I I didn't listen to a ton of network radio growing up. So when I got here, it was, huh, there's a lot of shows that aren't four hours. In fact, there's only one of them. Well, Fine Bomb, too. So there's two. And I, I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. But since I've been here and since I've been kind of in the network world, the the four-hour show seems ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's just way, way, way too so, long. It, so long. And I personally like three hours. Um, I think that you're able to give a lot of different people, you know, driving their cars, different audiences, your show in that three-hour span, uh, whereas in two hours, you know, not as many people are listening to it. So I think three hours is the perfect length for – Getting your voice out there, getting your product listened to, and I think it's the perfect amount to keep energy up and uh, talk about a lot of good stuff and get good guests in there. So uh, my vote is three hours. Uh, last question. Is there an ESPN employee that you are frightened by? And he threw out the name John Butchergross as someone we hmm. might be scared of. Just to get that I out of the way, I don't think any of us are afraid of John Butcher Gross. I've never met him. Yeah, I'm not no. afraid of him. When I was working nights, I'd walk by him a lot at night. Seems like a quiet guy, kind of, kind of skinny. Pretty jacked though. Apparently, he's yeah, like he's, sneaky. He works jacked. out. He definitely works out. But yeah, no, uh, no one comes to mind of people that I'm frightened by. I think intimidated by is a better word. Okay. Um, because I mean, no one frightens me. I think maybe if like. Teddy Bruschi is in a mood <laughs> and he's not moody. I'm just saying like, you know, he, he's, he still has that like kind of like wild card football player thing going mm-hmm. that like, you don't know if he's like pumped to be around yep. or is like going to snap at you. Um, he's kind of intimidating to be around, but he's usually like an awesome guy and he's like funny on the show and he was right. awesome with big cat and PFT. So I don't know. That I guess would be mine. And Teddy's on our show. So often that he'll come in a little earlier and yeah. hang out in the studio Hangs with out, us. Which and- is- Awesome. But you can just see, I could see Teddy snapping, especially like on a football field, like and just flipping that switch and just being a monster. Yeah. Like and, he's got the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. He's got crazy eyes. Yeah. Michelle, yeah. anyone come to mind for you? I'm thinking really hard. Okay. While you this. do that, I get intimidated by the thought of having to work with Bob Lee. I feel like I wouldn't be able to meet his expectations. He's such a legend. Mm. He and is a legend. everything that he does is so good. And it covers such important topics that I just don't know if I'd be able to get on his level. Like, Bob Lee is my answer yeah. for intimidation. The sauce boss would not <laughs> no, drive yeah. well with OTL. <laughs> I don't know if our sensibilities would match. I love what he does, though. Bob you know who's terrifying? John Brinkus. Terrifying. <laughs> Sports science. Don't want to cross that guy. <laughs> I Michelle, think, you got anyone? I think as the wheels are turning, you think... For someone to be intimidating, they have to be in a big position of power, right? Okay. So I'm trying to think. So I'm thinking, okay, who is like the the top dogs at ESPN? SVP. Mm-hmm. We've obviously met him, worked with him. He's great. Not scary or intimidating at mm-hmm. all. You jerk. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never really met Stephen A. Smith, but I see him in the hallway all the time, and he always says hello. Wicked nice guy. Yeah, super nice. I mean, super he unassuming. Say nice really to me. Um, I'm trying to think who. I, I mean. Jalen Rose I've worked with, super nice. John Gruden, who's obviously another top dog, couldn't be nicer. I never interacted with Chris Berman. He's someone that would have intimidated me, just because, again, just such a legend. But all I ever heard were nice things about Boom. I don't I don't know. I don't think there's anyone at ESPN, really, that I... Michelle, not easily uh, intimidated well, over here. Well, just because when you meet them, they're, they're super kind and smart, and, you know, they... They meet all your all of your expectations. To me, if someone's intimidating, you expect them to be this great person, and then they're cold or rude. Yeah, they're not like get out of my way, not famous person. Right, and no one that I've really interacted with at ESPN has been that way. So I can't really say that I'm intimidated by anyone. Even you know, this is like a sneaky answer, but when we had Tim Tebow on at the Super Bowl, Ooh. who I think is probably like the single most famous person here. Um, under the ESPN umbrella, wouldn't you say? Would Mets you umbrella, but yeah. I mean, ESPN, <laughs> SEC Network, Mets umbrella. Right, Mets. Um, even he like went around and shook everyone's hand mm-hmm. and was like, hey, thanks for having me. I'm eating avocados. And you're like, awesome, thanks for being here. And your avocados. And your avocados. Hey, I don't mind avocados. Avocados are great. Respect. You love avocados. I do. You I get avocados all the time at lunch. Yeah, we spend way too much time A healthy fat. 
<laughs> what? All right. I, I think that's enough for today. Uh, I think this one's going to be end up being our longest uh, post show pod. But uh, thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thanks. And uh, we just want to remind you something we want to do going forward. Um, obviously, subscribe to us, whether it's the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts. Also, leave a comment because that apparently is like awesome and makes us like jump up the boards on the Apple Podcasts. So leave a comment, and we'll read the best ones, probably po- maybe one positive one and one negative one <laughs> on all the podcasts going forward. Yeah, I like that. Um, and if you're going to leave a negative comment, at least rate us highly. And yeah. don't be super mean. Unless you actually hate, hate the us. Show. Then then just uh, don't. Well, then subscribe, you, but don't listen. If you hate us that much that you're going on to give us a bad rating and a bad comment, oh, my God. Get a life. Maybe dude. we should listen to what you're saying. Hey, grow up. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to the Ryan Rossillo Show post-show podcast. Be sure to subscribe on the Listen tab of the ESPN app and tune into the Ryan Rossillo Show weekdays at 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.